I want to speak to you today about two important items. First, our ongoing response to the pandemic, and then about the coming elections. First, we are now well past the middle of our semester and can actually begin planning for finals and even for the spring semester. I want to take this opportunity to thank you all for your sacrifice and your patience. You have been remarkable. We have only come this far because of your care for each other and your willingness to follow the requirements in our Royal Safe Together plan. Now, as pleased as I am with where we are today, I want to implore you to please keep it up. Do not relax your guard. We must stay the course and follow the safety measures that we have put into place, especially in these final weeks of the semester. Doing so is important for our time together, but it is also critical for your return home to your family. In the coming days, we will share some more detailed information about the end of the semester. Next, speaking about the election, few things I can recall in my lifetime has been as polarizing in the country as this upcoming election. This polarization carries with it a risk to something sacred here at the University of Scranton our sense of community. I encourage each of you and every one of you to exercise your civic duty by voting, regardless of which party, candidate, or cause that is dear to you. It is essential that your voice be heard. Next, I want all of us to remember that we must, we must as a university community, remain united regardless of the election's outcome next week. The, the, our campus must always be a place where we can safely and without fear or malice discuss and even disagree. In that spirit, I want to end with two brief reflections on the Jesuits from our founding fathers. The first is from a letter from John Adams to Thomas Jefferson, reflecting on the influence of Jesuits on the United States. The Jesuits in the United States, Adams wrote, are more numerous than anybody know. Shall we not have swarms of them here in every shape of printers, editors, writers, schoolmasters, etc.? Now this is John Adams. If ever any congregation of men should merit eternal perdition on earth and in hell, it is this company of Jesus. Our system, however, of religious liberty must afford them an asylum. But if they do not put the purity of our elections to a severe trial, it will be a wonder. Even though our second and third presidents might have had negative thoughts about the Jesuits, even they made sure that everyone had the right to speak their minds and vote. I can promise you Today, the Jesuits did not then, nor do they in 2020, have any designs on swaying or stealing this election. The second is from a famous Pennsylvanian, and in contrast to his peers, a friend of Jesuits, a friend of Jesuit education, Benjamin Franklin. Franklin traveled to French Canada with John Carroll, a Jesuit and the first Catholic bishop in, in America. Franklin took ill, and Carroll cared for him. When Franklin was later forming what became the Board of Trustees for the University of Pennsylvania, he invited Carroll to join it. Carroll had to decline because of his work, but recommended another Jesuit living in Philadelphia to serve on Penn's board. But I digress. More importantly, Frank Franklin had a deep and abiding love for the United States and worried for its future. When asked once by a woman if we have a republic or a monarchy, he replied, a republic, if you can keep it. It is now up to us to keep our republic, to vote, 
to reason with one another and always remain united as one nation under God. Thank you. <laughs>